they're getting caught with their pants down. And people, everyday people, are banding together and refusing to let them off the hook. Yeah. They're refusing to sell their stocks for a, for a cheap price. Well, welcome back to the ENTJ podcast. I'm Dan. I've got my friend Sean here. Today, we're going to talk about Wall Street bets, which is extremely topical at the moment. If you've been following the subreddit for a long time and you run a trading company. Yeah, so my name's Sean. I run a um, small little I mean, prop trade firm, I guess you could call it. I uh, use algorithmic trading uh, that is automated by computers, obviously co-located with some really big banks around the world. And I transact anywhere between sort of five and seven billion dollars worth of currency a week. Um, <laughs> manage. Yeah. yeah that's crazy, yeah, it's man. pretty intense. You said before, this is a, almost like a historic thing. Why do you say that? Why is this, why is this whole Wall Street best, let's call it a fiasco, something that's going to be memorable in history? Has it changed the rules of the game perhaps? I mean, it could tank an entire hedge fund, um, Melvin Capital. Um, there's a few other hedge funds that have stepped in and actually lent them money. Um, Robinhood and a whole bunch of other brokers for the first time ever have refused to allow people to buy a stock um, and have only allowed selling. I mean, the stock's been halted multiple times. We've seen those short ladder attacks, which I described earlier. You're seeing huge, like um, on CNBC and big and CNN, big you know financial um, cable news channels. You've got them sort of lambasting and 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 calling out Wall Street bets and, and retail investors and you know saying what they're doing is irresponsible and all this sort of stuff. And if you know anything about like the situation, you're just watching this in disbelief, going, "How can people believe this? This is absolute rubbish." You're you're seeing um, that almost like there's these hedge fund managers perhaps i guess what you're implying is they have connections with the media to kind of make these wall street bet people look oh for sure people. they do oh, i'm sure so, they do yeah um yeah it's it's almost like i think what it's doing at least is it's waking people up to how the global financial system is being manipulated by people with a lot of money yeah we've had a global pandemic and the rich are, are getting richer and even when they fail they're getting protected like something mm. clear, like it just seems like something has to change like uh it's, well, because it's not fair i'm a huge fan of capitalism me too and I love capitalism. <laughs> yeah and so and but i hear a lot of people who are like who say that capitalism you know capitalism is fundamentally flawed and it can tend towards becoming broken like what we've what we've seen here well essentially what we've seen all through the life of capitalism right yes um is that there are people who ensure that they get all the benefits of the capitalist um you know sort of society but get none of the downsides and the downsides are if you make the wrong decision you get penalized for it you lose money or whatever um you make the right decisions you get money for it yeah um and so that's essentially how it works so a lot of these guys you know melvin capital and citron research and stuff they've made the wrong decision there is they no doubt about that in fact yes i, I hear what yeah. you're saying well, there's like, nothing I... wrong with them losing a bunch of money right because that's how capitalism works yeah but they are fighting tooth and nail and using every dirty trick in the book um and you know getting brokers to sort of try to suspend trading and using this you know short short attack short ladder attack and a whole bunch of other stuff um, in order to in order to save themselves from their bad decision. The chickens are coming home to roost, but they're trying to build the roof and not let the chickens in. Well, it's it could potentially work. I mean, it's you're talking worked a about, lot in the past. It has, and but you're also talking about. Um, you know, there are other hedge funds stepping in and lending them money. I think it's easy to cri yeah. criticize capitalism in, in, in instances like this because it's like, well, clearly something's wrong. But I know I, capitalism for me like, has allowed me to have the freedom to do the things I'm good at and not be restricted. So um, I've, I, I've personally benefited from, you know, being able to access credit to, be, to working within a free market. So what criticisms yeah. I think are valid here is that this isn't a free market. Like you, as you said before, no, it's not these a free people market. are no. actually, they, they get the benefits 
without the the risks they get the positives yeah. without the negatives and i think that's if right. we wanted to protect this system we have and i mean look around you i mean there's a lot of people hurting but there's a lot less people hurting than there were 100 years ago there's a lot less people dying right. there's a lot of other issues which definitely need to be talked about anxiety depression and we talked about this on our show in the past but it's like there's education available it's free there's i mean the world by any standard even even if you look at the at the uh, at the absolute poverty line, which, which it's shrinking, believe it or not, absolute poverty is shrinking mm. every single year. But what's not yeah. shrinking, what's not shrinking, is the gap between the rich and the poor in in many places in the world. And one of the big reasons yes. is is because the because the big people, the, the rich, aren't losing. So we actually yes. hold the rich accountable, make them lose, force them to lose when mm. they make a bad yeah. decision, like GameStop. Then perhaps we can even have a better system where that money is not going to be um, we, we talk about taxing the rich, taxing the rich. Well, that's one thing. We can talk about that another time. But how about just holding the rich accountable to their losses? Because once that happens, yeah. um, that money will actually be freed up and then go to the, to go to the, let's say, the common person. Go to, go to yeah. you and me. Like it'll, it'll balance the playing field a little bit. Well, that money doesn't get locked away in the bank, right? Like a lot of these guys who bought shares at like $5 on GameStop and now it's trading at 330 yeah. You know, they, they might have bought like um, $10,000 worth of shares that's gone massively up. You know, now they're paying off their homes, they're, you know, buying a new car. All that money is going straight back into the economy again. The whole reason why the rich are able to get richer is because they can stop themselves from losing when they've made a very risky decision. Um, and that risky decision can pay off fabulously. Um, but, you know, I sort of, I sort of naively bet against the market in like June or July because I was not expecting the economy and a lot of these companies get so bailed well. out. They got yeah. bailed out so hard and and I sort of had a little bit of faith in the system that like, well, this company that was paying out massive bonuses to all of its executives and doing share buybacks in order to drive up its stock price in order to justify paying out even more bonuses to its executives um, instead of you know, instead of maybe putting that money into a savings account, save for a rainy day, you know, I sort of expected those companies to to go bankrupt and have to liquidate all of their assets. And then someone along and someone who was responsible who actually saved their money to come along and go, well, those assets are underpriced now. I'll buy them. And they're actually, yeah. they're actually valued more. So I'll buy them and I'll put them to work and make them productive and useful. Crazy you've returns. been fiscally responsible and but i've been fiscally be responsible rewarded for that um and exactly you, but you're not able to be rewarded for that because no for whatever political uh uh yeah let's call it political reason um that hasn't been able to happen but that's kind of what we're talking yeah. about here it's like this is important and i guess because 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 the tentacles of these big hedge funds who knows how deep they go they have the they have the power to kind of manipulate the the, the the public opinion on this issue even um yeah um, well I they're think, trying to with these yeah. big news channels so yeah, yeah. So that's why wall street bets like social media i mean <laughs> i think in the last few years when it comes to politics and elections it's, it's been having more of a negative than a positive but maybe once for once social media is actually able to have a positive change on the on on <laughs> On political reform and i think with these guys are wall street bets you know it's very interesting we'll see how it pans out um but you know they they had a very solid thesis um big companies tried to use every trick in the book to push it down and now they're essentially at war um and we'll see if uh, the authorities actually step in and do their jobs as a regulator they haven't for the past month and a half um the question is yet to be seen if they if they ever will um but yeah there's definitely some big things happening in congress there's some big class action lawsuits being filed in the southern district of new york already um there's letters being written by congress members directly to these companies now um wow so they're starting letters. to hold them accountable well, we'll see if it's just noise.